Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Today's podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And Ron, was this episode 59? The Jack Ham episode. Oh, boy. This is a linebacker with a Steelers, right? Yep, Steel Curtain. Steel Curtain defense, yep. Played, played them many times in some of my replays. Fun times. I bet you have. We Fun. keep going up. We're going to get into the offensive and defensive lineman portion of the program here. So <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> your jaw autos are coming to be true really soon. <laughs> Hey, so today we're talking about long projects. Ron just finished up another long project. He's going to talk a little bit about that, and and I'm thinking about starting a long project. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the the pros and the cons of a long project, and uh, how we start one and how we finish one, and what we do in the middle and the whole bit. We're just going to sit back and chat about chat about long projects today. Uh, we also got a little bit of news we're going to get into. And uh, obviously, what we're playing, and of course, Aunt Becky. So, uh, so we get right into it. Absolutely. All right, here we go. No, Aunt Becky, they're not going to bring you in and out hamburgers when you go into the big house. It's not that long. Yeah, she'll be out for you. Know it. <laughs> Really, I think seriously, it's what three weeks? Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, it just yeah. yeah, it's a slap on the wrist. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, so uh, so we actually have some news to talk about today. Uh, yeah, bro- brokers were taping this on Monday the twelfth. Yeah, Monday, October twelfth of twenty twenty. We're taping this one, that episode fifty nine. Oh, hey, ways to get a hold of us: digital to dice dot com. I always forget that digital to dice dot com is our website where we put all of our podcasts over on Spreaker. Nine seven eight seven five one dice. Nine seven eight seven five one three four two three is how you can send us a text. And uh, Facebook, Facebook dot com slash groups slash digital to dice. You can join our ever growing Facebook group. And chat chat about your projects and the whole bit. Ask questions. Anything to do uh, related with the show or gaming is fine with us. Mm. Um, so first thing that came across the wire. Ron, why don't you go ahead? Well, breaking news this afternoon that uh, – or this Monday afternoon or Monday morning that Out of the Park, the company that does that, Marcus Heinsohn's wonderful game, also responsible for franchise hockey manager – what, up to seven – What's that, that franchise? It might be Those six. I think it's six or seven, yeah. Is it six? Has been sold to a Korean gaming company that makes game, uh, sports games for your mobile device. I believe that they have, they make the mobile game for MLB's official mobile game and some Korean league stuff. And so this is, I think, one of their, as far as I can understand, one of their first forays into the desktop Market don't want to say it's a full you know into full games. Uh, um, read the FAQ on the sale that Marcus answered, and you know it's always happy and glowing. But uh, you, you just kind of have to wonder what the future is of the franchise. They've gone to more of the franchise team or the personal best franchise teams where it's a kind of a rip off of the EA stuff where you buy the packs of cards and you put together the perfect team. You've, I don't know if you've ever, I know, I know uh, you know ultimate you team or something like that. Yeah. Something like that. And so I know that they worked hard to make that it's hard to make a game that's going to make everybody happy anyway. But you just kind of have to wonder in the back of your head. Obviously, it won't be for the 2022 version, but is this something that they're going to turn into more of a perfect or ultimate team franchise where you have micro charges for everything? Or are they going to continue to develop the sim? Yeah, you, anytime something like this happens, you always just really hold your breath because it's something that you really enjoy. OOTP is a, a, a fun baseball game and obviously Franchise Manager Hockey was one of my most played games on Steam and I I really enjoyed playing both of those and now it's been sold to another company. So you always wonder, it's like, you know, what are the changes going to be and are they going to be better? Are they going to re- really, you know, what what direction is this going to go? I guess is the question we all ask ourselves and of course, you know, in the press press release it's all you know rainbows and unicorns and candy canes exactly. and you know but yeah you you wonder if it's going to be better if it's going to be different i did hear a lot of people talking about the microtransactions which 
you know, a part of a lot of games now. So you got to wonder either that or can you, you know, will you just be able to play these games on your iPad or something like that? You, you know, it, it, it could be very good. It could continue to integrate it more into mobile platforms. I, you know, we talked a little bit about this last, not the specific issue, but last week, you know, the game companies, how, you know, how are these games played and how much of that do they know? You know, OOTP being a Steam game, I wonder if they get reports of not only how many minutes the game is played, but how do people play it? When I do OOTP, it's purely fictional. I, I, don't, I don't use it for a replay. Our, our buddy Al does a lot of what-if stuff there. I, from reading the message boards, a lot of newer players take their favorite real-life teams and try to build a team that wins. So you'll see the, the 2016 Toronto Blue Jays franchise that gets that if you look into it now is in 2057 so all the players are fictional um i'm curious to see what they do with it I'm, because this other company and i'm drawing a blank on who it is has a major league license i don't think that's in any danger but always just very curious to see as you said what is the future of the franchise and will they make a previous version free if they decide to go away from the bread and butter. But to me, OOTP, and this is just my opinion, it's not Dave's opinion or or just my own, is that they've always been the baseball product that tries to do be all things for all people. And some things it does really well and other things it doesn't. Now, the one thing that they did different for this year and I haven't played around with is that the stadium graphics are much, much better. Mm. That, that that's coming closer to what we had talked about with what what Kerry Batts is trying to do for pro strategy football make the sit merge that sim and those graphics together which if you can do that it's going to make something that more people are going to want to buy but uh, just very very curious and I was surprised that it sold too I don't think Marcus I think Marcus is about our age give or take yeah I would think so yeah and so it's not like he's coming to the end of his career. And, uh, you know, if we had read that Stratomatic had been sold, I wouldn't have been too surprised at that. Hal Richmond is in his early 80s. Um, but well, he must have so, been, yeah, been presented with a, of- with a good offer or a good game plan or something. He must have thought it was going to take something in the right direction, you know. Well, he's staying with the new company. Mm-hmm. Um, and... But I would not be surprised, and again, this is just my own intuition, don't read anything else into this, is that the game gets geared more towards that perfect and ultimate team. I would. That's where everything's going, I would think, but time will tell. Yeah. Time will tell when we see that. So, yeah, so keep an eye on that. Uh, the other little bit of news we have here is uh, Dave... Cook, right? It's Cook, right? Yes, it's Cook. Okay. I, I've been saying Cook for so long. Dave Cook. I think we all had. Action PC hockey, let's just say. Uh, got an email from them the other day, and they got three uh, new seasons coming out for the hockey game soon. Uh, the 1939-40, uh, I would assume the NHL season, and two WHA seasons. 75, oh, two WHA seasons. 75, 76, and 77, 78 to go along with the the 72 and the 73 seasons. So that'll give them four, I believe, WHA seasons. So if you like the WHA, uh, a couple more seasons coming to Action PC Hockey. That 77-78 season, does someone by the name of Gretzky come up for Indianapolis at the end? Boy, I, I know he played for the he Racers. He played there because for... the answer to the ultimate trivia question, who did Wayne Gretzky score yeah. his first major league goal against, and it's the Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. So I'm not sure when he jumped in there, if, it, if that'll be in there or not. It'd be, be fun if it was. So that would that's going to give them, what, three WHA seasons or four? Four. Of the eight, so, and yeah. they never played with the orange puck. I don't think they ever did. No, nope. I think the no, referees had red stripes, though. I sort think. of the AFL refs in the American yeah. Football League. Yeah. Ones. Anyway, so that's cool. Yeah. So we got a couple, couple tidbits there. So I guess uh, why don't we slide into what we're playing? Um, Ron, why don't you lead off here? What you well? Doing? Uh, I just finished my 1978 Major League Baseball replay. Um, 156 streams and so the world series after some of the best of ch- league championship series ever they both went to game fives texas upset new york in game five bobby bonds took ron Guidry deep for a three-run homer in the first and 
Oh boy. And so the Rangers and Dodgers met in the World Series and kind of like leaving the ginger ale on the counter overnight. The World Series was kind of flat, especially after, you know, a great first run of the playoffs. Not to take anything away from the Dodgers that won in five. They were the clear and deserved winners. Don Sutton with two wins in the series and and all and Steve Yeager. Steve Yeager in real life hit 188. And what's he doing the World Series? He hits like 400. Wow. Out of the nine hole, because we're playing a DH, because that's what they play with in 78. So hats off to the Dodgers. They won the first two at home like they did in real life, but they lost game three in Texas. And, you know, the lead changed hands in that series once. Oh, uh. That's too bad. You know, and, you, and so everyone is going, oh, the games are kind of seated to be to be close. Nope. I mean, I mean the Dodgers deserved it. Clearly yeah. they deserved it, and they were. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to go seven to make a good series because, you know, no, I've, I've yeah. done some five or six-game series that had a lot of drama, and it just it doesn't sound like you was quite. No, uh, yeah. no, no, no. Ratings no, were down. Really. Ratings were down. TV ratings um, were down. <laughs> Kind of, kind of, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, NBC would not, NBC would have not been happy. First of all, to have the Rangers beat the Yankees, yeah, in real yes, life, yes, because that was the rematch of the '77 series. Yep. And then for the Dodgers to walk right through, yeah, yeah. no, they wouldn't have been very happy. <laughs> We're gonna preempt this for 60 minutes. <laughs> uh, that's right. Uh, so the post game sh- it, it ended on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Don't forget Disney's next, and more people are gonna watch this. So, <laughs> well, well, so that's. Oh, no, we got a couple tribute games. I did one for Whitey Ford, did one for Bob Gibson, and when we're done with this, I got to do one for Joe Morgan. Yeah, it's been a bad year for oh. for that stuff. It really has. Yeah, I think Joe's the sixth baseball Hall of Famer to pass away. Um, There's been some hockey players. Which I did one for Henri Richard. Uh, I did one for John Thompson. I didn't do one. I thought about doing one for Gail Sayers. But 65 was really his only good year, and you can see all the footage for that. Or watch Brian's song with Billy D. Williams. Yep. You know, so there's a lot of Gil Sayers stuff out there. Um, but, yes, so we did yeah, three. This is like my – this will be my fifth tribute game in the last six weeks. Yeah. John yep. Thompson, Tom Seaver, Bob Gibson. You, you, you like doing them, but you you don't like doing no, them. No, I, yeah. mean, I mean, yes, you get to do, you know, you're kind of, I don't want to say obligated, um, but yes, you you do them because you know that there's some sort of personal attachment and for a lot of people. Mm. So, yeah, so we did one for Whitey Ford. What else have I played? Oh, I would talk about the 81-82 hockey replay. I showed you how the, the new game, and so I think the new version of Strat PC Hockey, which messed up my layout for how I played the game, and I haven't gone back in to fix the layout to play, so I haven't played any of that. And I just wanted to get my World Series done. That was my uh, focus for, for last week. Uh, and so it turns out, because one of the things that I've noticed is that Vancouver, which was under 500 in real life, is ahead of Edmonton in the division. Vancouver has incredible goaltending, and Edmonton can't play defense to save its life, especially on the road, according to Strat. Hmm. Well, the Vancouver goalies were miscarded. Ooh. Safety percentages were all out of way. Was that McLean? Uh, no. Uh, I don't remember the names off the top of my head. I was just happened to look into, just b- before I got in contact with you tonight, went looking at the Strat fan board over there to see what was new if there was anything new and there was a two-page thread on on uh how 81 82 was miscarded how the goal the goalies are way off was brodeur and hanlon yeah brodeur i think was given much to in hines rick hines yeah played three games yeah right uh we're all given much two cards that were too good Okay, uh, and that you know, if you get on, if, if you've played strat hockey, you know that most of the goals come off the goalie cards. Depending on, it's an interesting matrix how they make it work. Uh, but if you have super goalie and net, you're not going to give up enough goals, and so it makes teams like Vancouver play well. Now th- that season, I did not know until tonight is computer only. They've never made an 81, 82 card set. If they did, 
it was under the original formula and it needs to be redone. Mm-hmm. It kind of puts a damper on the replay I'm trying to do. Oh, of course it does. If the goal is too strong like, or too weak, yeah. Yeah, and it's like I'm almost halfway through, too. <sighs> yeah, and you, you can't manually do anything with those in Strat, You right? can't edit the cards. You can't, and the cards have never been reissued and it's not like you can, yeah. And so it's not like you punch in the right numbers and it spits out a card for you. Yeah. People being able to figure out how to make the cards and that would be. But I know that with Action PC, you can go in and, and mess you, with some of the skills. You can change everything at Action PC. Yeah, I just want, okay, so you can't do that. So it, it's not like this, hey, change the save percentage to this and the card will adjust. Right. Yeah, okay. And the cards will, and the, no, because that's an open engine. So no. You, they don't want people to know how, it, and that's fair. Is. That's fair enough, that's you know. Absolutely fair. But it'd just be nice if they said, "Hey, we're going to send out a, a you know, a, an update to the eighty one, eighty two season, and then just download this file." And if you bought the so game, so I might change the season I'm doing, which is too bad because that's a fun year. Yeah. But it really messes up teams like Edmonton because they're because some of the Kings goalies cards were messed up too. Well, that's two teams in Edmonton's division, yeah, that have been given boosters. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why Gretzky is so far. It's like he's not not only not going to get ninety two goals, he's going to get seventy seventy five. But he won't maybe, but he certainly won't get eighty goals in a game. There's no way in heck he's going to get two hundred and fifteen points or whatever the heck. It was. Yeah, you were so, saying that. Yeah, yeah, and so that would explain why he can't do that. So I'll kind of think about it. that's too bad because I was enjoying that. But we'll figure out something else. I might do an Islander Hab play. For some of those teams. Yeah, you like you I like, like doing those. They're fine. I do. So that's pretty much what I've been playing and so the other stuff I can't talk about. Oh, well good. It's all secret sauce. Oh, it's all secret sauce. Okay. Oh, we did uh by the way, did you actually watch the uh sixties NFL championship game that Al and I taped? I think I started to. I haven't finished it. I won't talk about it then. I'll be good. You said it was a good game, that's all I know. So all right. I'll, Take off your headphones for a second. All right, go ahead. Okay, so now that Dave can't hear me, uh, it's Dallas and Green Bay. It's the 68 Cowboys and the 62 Packers. And the Packers, uh, Cowboys and Packers go back and forth. The Packers are leading as the clock is running out and Dallas has the ball. And... Dallas scores the game tying touchdown and extra point as the gun sounds and we go to overtime. Really just an incredible game. The Packers win it uh so in overtime, but just that just that. So go back and watch on the Super Bowl tournament channel on YouTube. All right. Okay, I'm back from the secret room. Uh, I'm going to answer some questions now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so what have I been playing? I've been uh, really enjoying the Pro Strategy Football 2021 game. I really have. I played the I replayed the 1978 season, kind of doing a game of the week, so to speak, mm-hmm. and then simulating the rest. I think I even simulated some of the playoffs. I didn't play all the playoffs, but I played some of the important games. And uh, I have my championship game because I don't know if I can say super blank yes. game. Okay, so There's I have no my my in the description or anything like that. But yes, you can. Okay, so I have my 1978 championship game coming up between Dallas and Denver, if you will. And it's I have a rematch of the one the year before. Yeah, so I haven't I haven't played yet. It's, it's still been sitting there because I've, I've been like, as I've been back to work working like a madman. So I haven't uh, had a chance to play it yet. I I'd probably stream. I should stream that one live as that's a championship game. But yeah, so it's Dallas Denver. Dallas beat the Rams quite easily at home. I think they were leading seventeen nothing in late into the game and the Rams got a I think they got a touchdown and then they got the onside kick to cut it to seventeen fourteen, but that's where that uh, ended. So the score was a lot closer than the game. I joked before that for every New Year's I'd be disappointed because Michigan would find a way to lose the Rose Bowl. Yeah. Well that was Christmas for Rams fans in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Dinner around yeah. Christmas, the Rams win the division. It's time for their divisional playoff game. Up, oh, you went to Minnesota and lost. Up, oh, yep. you lost to Dallas. Yep, that's how it was. Yep. But, uh, and then in the AFC, New England was thirteen and three or something like that. What I don't know how many games they played they back really then, but but they were thirteen and something, either thirteen and one or thirteen and three. Thirteen and three and seventy eight. Okay, and so they played. They ended up playing Denver at home, and they got four turnovers in the first half their first three possessions were turnovers for new england in their own territory and they held uh the broncos to two field goals out of all that somehow the, the defense was stellar it was 15 nothing 
Broncos at the half. Patriots cut it to 15-14. They missed a field goal that would have put them up 17-15. to uh, And then Denver had a late drive to tack on a field goal to make it uh, 18-14. That was a final. So Denver, uh, on, on, on four turnovers by New England, beats the Patriots in New England. And so Denver goes to the Super Bowl. That was a fun did game. You, I did a little video recap of that because that was such a bizarre I game. I that. that, that, that was the weather bad for that? I I well it must have been cold. I don't know if it was raining or not. I do I find that the, got cold. it's it's got wind, heavy wind, rain and snow. Yeah, the snow was in Denver for some games and it was it was fun watching oh, the snow. Great. Yeah. And I noticed that when it's when it's raining out there are a lot more fumbles and stuff like that, you know. But that that was a fun fun season. Um so I'll be playing that Super Bowl coming uh, I said it Super Bowl coming up uh shortly on yes. my channel. You just can't um, label it as that. I'm going to try to start up another season. I I think I did 82 i think i'm gonna do 82 or 84 one of those two seasons i want to start up another replay of that because that is such a, a a fun fun game just to kick back and i i'm playing uh on casual mode too i'm just yep. you know inside run outside run i'm not designing plays and you know expert mode is fun but i found i was just enjoying watching this play out in front of me yep i didn't have to really think too much about that's it that's a nice thing about that game is that you can do that yep i yep. got two potential projects that I just, one of them you might see as early as this week. The other one, I'll talk to you a bit offline. About. Okay. Yeah. But it, it's, it's so fun watching it and doing the recaps and stuff. That was fun. Doing the recap show was fun. Yeah. I thought about doing that, you know, cause the thing about this game uh, is that you can go to any game that was simulated and go into the highlights and find the yes. scores. Now, it doesn't do every single play, but it does the big ones. It does the turnovers and the scores. So I, I thought about, you know, d- doing what I did there with that, that one game is, is to do like, um, you know, the, the, the Pat Summerall, Tom Brookshire, old mm-hmm. school, you know, you know th- this week in, in, in football here and, you know, in, in, in Baltimore, the Colts were hosting the Jets and, and you can just show some highlights of the game and it would be fun. It would be really fun to do that. You know, you wouldn't even have to play any of the games. Exactly. You yeah. could just just set up the sh- the weekly show and it's like that could be another fun project down the line but it is fun playing the game too. So that that is such a fun game. Uh go check that out. Make sure you get the mods for that too that makes it really fun. So I did that. Uh I pulled out the Strat PC hockey and I and I realized that I was playing um I'm probably a couple of months into the 1974-75 hockey season. And I'm not playing any particular team. I'm just kind of pl- playing teams at random. And uh, last night I played the Bruins and the Sabres. Bruins went up 2 nothing in the first couple minutes of the game and lost 5-2 to two at home to the Sabres. Not sure how that happened. Korab, I think he had two shorthanded goals in the game for the Sabres. It was uh, something else. But uh, back to Strat PC Hockey, a lot of fun with that. And I did get my cards in. I don't know if I talked about that already. I got my 87-88. And my, yeah, and you, and you also got the Hall of Fame set, all-time right? greats. Yep, in the ninety ninety one season, I didn't have two, and I got the all-time greats. So I separated the all-time greats. And oh boy, this is embarrassing. But I'm a hockey guy. I'm an older hockey guy too. And you'd think I'd know a lot of these guys. I took the um, there's two hundred thirty seven cards or something like that in that two hundred thirty four. I forget. There's a lot mm-hmm. of cards in that 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 set. And I cut them all up the other night, and I uh, put them into piles of of the ones I know and the ones I don't know. And even if I've heard of them and I didn't know, I like Clint Benedict, I don't know him, but I've heard of him. So he went into the pile that I know. If it was a name that I've just never heard of in my life, it went to the pile on the left. Sadly, the pile of I don't know was a little bit bigger than the pile that I do know. So it must have been a lot of a lot of older guys from the 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s that I just never heard of. Sadly, I just just didn't, you know, and I felt bad because, like, man, I I thought I knew hockey, but I guess I don't know that much, or at least that many players. So I'm going to take the the guys I do know, and I'm going to split them up into. I'm going to see how many I have, how many defensemen, and the whole bit. I'm going to try to split them up into I don't know three, four, or five teams, and then uh and have a little tournament nice. with that. Yeah, so that should be kind of fun. Getting back to some strat hockey uh, on on the tabletop. I don't know if I'll use the utility. I might. But I might start on the table because it is still fun to set them up on the table and roll yeah. the dice. It really is. So, Our buddy Roberto Shavini, who's turning into the, to the Matt Damon of the show, <laughs> um, uh, is coming out with a horse racing game that is released to the public on the 15th. And so tomorrow or Wednesday, I'll, I, I have a bunch of races 
And so I will do a demo of the horse racing game to show off. It looks, he's got some of the Triple Crown races. He's done, a, again, a tremendous job of just trying to capture horse racing, whether it's the jumping racing in the U.K., I believe there's a couple of grand nationals in there. I didn't realize that, you know, some of the big European championships in France and Italy, some of the Canadian triple crown races in there. And, and he must've gotten some Florida Derby stuff because there's like four or five of those. So watch out for that. And, you know, you can look up his cat, download his catalogs and stuff at uh, sportsreplays.net. There's a whole thing there for Roberto. Yeah, his games are really fun. They're mostly quick play games, but they are really fun. And before we get into the main topic, I do want to say that Sports Sim Magazine number four is out, Ron. Yes. Number four is out. It's got classic golf on the yep, cover Bruce of the Kish's article. game, one yep. of our guests. Yep, Bruce Kitch was on the show here, and he's got a golf game he talks about. I actually have a couple of things in here myself. I, uh, I did a review for a couple of games. In here, so you can go check that out. So you definitely check out Sports Sim Magazine number four. Um, some of the other things are in here. They got a, a breakaway football article, intro to classic um, college basketball, some Stratomatic college basketball cards in there too. I think so. Yeah, tributes to Tom Seaver and Lou Brock. There's an article on that. There's a review of Olympic gymnastics by Roberto Shavini in there as well. So hmm. lots of good stuff in the episode nice thing number about four. That is in the centerfold. And and those of us of a certain age know that centerfolds are good things. It's where all the Klingon chips stuff is. Yeah. Um, is that they've got sample cards from sample games? So you, can, I think for the the classic golf, for instance, I think he, they had the 1980 mm-hmm. season. So if you and a couple of things. So if you want to try one, it's like a demo. It's like the old computer gaming magazines with the demo CDs. And so if you want to just get a taste of some of that, that's there. And one of the things that was was um, was Stratomatic College Basketball, some of the Final Four teams. Yeah, that was pretty good. And also along with that, uh, they have the, the Squared Circle, a pro wrestling simulation game. Um, I have the uh, the book in. I just need – I started reading it the other day so I could figure out how to play it. It's a, yeah, from what you showed me, it's very well done. Oh, yeah. It, it's gorgeous looking. The book is gorgeous looking. It simulates – or it replicates, I guess, or you can recreate. Maybe that you can recreate. Yep. That's probably the better word for wrestling. Uh, the 1985-86 Georgia Championship wrestling, the stuff that was yep. on TBS as a kid. So yeah, there's a lot of cards in the in the book that's included with it, and uh, I just have to sit down and, and figure out how to play it and, and get going on that. But that that's finally coming out too. Yeah, so the squared circle. Be on the lookout for that as well. All right, so shall we get on to our main topic? Sure. I set out to do when I restarted the channel. By the way, apparently I hit the fifth anniversary of me doing games back in August. Um, I set out to do a baseball season and a football season every year. And so the baseball season this year was 1978. It was the one I've always wanted to do if I was actually take a season and play all all 2,430 games of it. It would be 1978. And so figured I would just give it the Retro Sports Network treatment, which is essentially three games a week minimum, an all-star game, some extra games come later in the season for pennant races, and playoffs. So, but because of our dear friend Corona and the fact that there wasn't for a lot of people a real baseball season this year, it turned into a full, honest to God, single team season length replay with double. I don't know how many double headers I had, but game five, the last day of that game of that season was my 156th stream. Wow. And so if you had, you saw probably four, five, six double headers thrown in there, um, that's a full season. That's a full 162. And it took me 10 months. Now, 78, a half season replay with playoffs, supposed to be, you know, it's supposed to go from January to August. So I've, you know, the original thought was 30 weeks, which is 26 weeks for the regular season, two weeks for the playoffs, and two weeks of either 
my wife being on vacation or I get sick and miss, you know, some padding time, you know, making sure that I get some break between the end of baseball season and the start of football season. Uh, because we've been doing things with other football games, there isn't a planned uh, full replay from on my channel for football. And so this turned into a 10 month project. That's a long time. Uh, that's a long that's time. That's a long time. Our friend Baseball Demos started last year at the same time that I was started, I think, 82. Or was talking about doing 82. Uh, a 1977 Chicago White Sox replay. I think he was doing it in, uh, in Stratomatic, and I forget. I think Super Advanced. Advanced or Super Advanced. He's just finishing that. He's at the, his World Series. Ironically... The Dodgers and the Rangers from 77. Wow. Cool. Wow. And, and so, but it took him almost two years to do that. Now, that wasn't the only thing that he did in all that. But, but yeah, so one to two, you know, from 10 months. And again, doing this because I'm streaming and it's a show and it's what I do to, to two years. And that's not uncommon, and so I figured that this would be a good chance for us to talk about what we like about those sort of things and what we don't like about those things. And as I got to check my phone for something, you know, you said to me last night, I'm thinking of. Yeah. So I am thinking of um, tackling a bigger project with Strat PC hockey is is a, I, I I was going to do it on the table, but I do want to keep all the stats and like the fact that, that Strat will sim the other hockey game. So I thought about picking a season, uh, probably one of the Boston Bruins seasons, I would think, but, but not necessarily. I haven't decided for sure if it's going to be the Bruins or not. But I thought about picking a season and just playing the entire season, you know, every game for one team mm -hmm. and just pick a team to do that. And I, like I said, I haven't decided what season because I, I have, I don't know, eight or nine seasons, I think, for that. So it would have to be a season that I have in a team that I that I like or, or would like to just play as. And I just play all their games. And I figure it takes about an hour or so to play those. And the good thing is you don't have to do it all in one night. So I could play a little bit one night and a little bit the next night. But you're still talking 80 hours of gameplay here. At a minimum. At minimum, yeah, 80 to 100 hours. So, you know, that's going to be a bigger project for me. So, so I, I guess the, the first thing I like to do when talking about th this wrong, about longer projects is how, how do you prepare for a longer project? You know, so I'm throwing this out to the audience too. What do you guys do? to prepare for a long project. And when you're thinking, okay, I'm going to do this. This is my idea. Go. All right. Well, you know, I think for that, I think most people's long projects are what you were talking about. Single season, one team. And so you, you hit it right on the head. There has to be some sort of emotional or educational connection to it. And so what, you know, best piece of advice I can give you, you know, what season was, what, what, what year would have been when you turned 14? What would have been that season? 81. Okay. So that would be, if you were, I've never done this before. What should I do? That would be where yeah. I would take the Bruins for, for from. me, for whatever reason with me, that. my, uh, when I was 11 or 12, that would be 78. That, that was my, okay. my heyday. That, 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 that's what, 70. Yeah, seventy eight, seventy nine would be that, and that's the year that they lost in the in the semis, to, or was that the finals? No, semis to Montreal. Yeah, that's the oh, the too many men game. Too I think that was. Yeah, but that's the, I and, see. I did the seventy eight football, and I do seventy seven, seventy eight baseball. That just right. that was the high time for me. That's yeah, absolutely. And so that, but for whatever you know, so you take that team, and so you either how do you prepare for it? Well, you like I said, having an emotional attachment. And for you, that 78, 79 Bruins team would be all about getting past Montreal. You get to the season, you get to play everybody, you get to know how they feel. And for hockey, it's all about the playoffs anyway. Mm. And so can I get that team past Montreal? Uh, can I get that further than what Don Cherry did? Mm. Uh, for baseball, can I get the Red Sox over the hump? Can I get them past the Yankees to get yeah. into the well, playoffs? I guess that's the other thing I wanted to ask too. It throwing us out yeah. to the audience and yourself too is, yeah, you know, what, what is the goal of the of the long replay? Because obviously, if if I'm if I take that season, but I, I was even thinking of taking uh, either eighty eight or ninety Bruins because they went to the Stanley Cup in those years. That's the Peter Klima series, yeah, yeah. So so you know, is the goal of the replay to 
see if you can get your championship team back to the championship or to get your team who just missed the championship to the championship. Or, like you just said, can I get the Red Sox 80 wins? Knowing they're not going to make the playoffs in my replay. So there's a couple different ways. Or when I played... I'm sorry, when I played the Seals, I was just trying to get 19 wins, you know, or 20 wins out of the Seals in my, my shootout hockey replay. So I guess there's different goals for different projects. Yeah. And, and some you set up to fail, like the Seals were not going to the playoffs, and I knew that. And in other ones, you expect to get to the playoffs. And, and so I guess there's different goals for different I, projects. I think the other thing is, if you let's say you took that 89-90 Bruins team. You're going to, you're going to, you know, you, you forgot that you watched the night that Gailey scored a hat trick against Pittsburgh. And so you might come across like, wow, he put five past Barrasso that night. And you look it up and, whoa, he put four past. I remember now, yeah. you know, and, and Derek Sanderson is doing pirouettes in the press, you know, that sort of thing. And so a lot of it is to bring back memories of, what have you, and you spend a lot, some of it's nostalgia, and a lot of it is spend time again with people who brought you a good time mm-hmm. to sit there and watch Grogan and Irving Fryer work their magic to get the Patriots into the playoffs, or shut LaFleur and LaFleur work together to get the, I mean, shut scoring 60 goals. Or when I, I did the 75, 76 Islanders, I, I knew about bossy bossy wasn't there. I'd watched a video about Eddie Westfall and the early Islanders just pounding the crap out of the Bruins, 10 to two or 10 to three. Yeah. It was a nutty game. Yep. And like, Oh, and you know, the Islanders were the team when I was eight, nine years old, we all know who Mike bossy was. And by the so I said, what the hell? I'll just start it. And I just grew to love that team. Uh, Clark Gillies and Brian Trottier and Danny Potvin and his brother is there. And so it's even though you you just get to see how teams form and teams gel and it could be for whatever reason. Um, Mm -hmm. 78 was the first year I really became aware of baseball as a whole. And it just turned out that. Everything was within – all four divisions were within five games. And, oh, yeah, the Red Sox had a score to settle. And, oh, no, the Red Sox didn't even come close to selling that score in, in my replay. The Rangers, I thought, were the best story. They, they finished within five games of first place in, in real life, and they went to the World Series. And so that's good enough for me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, whatever, it could be for a variety of different reasons. Even if you just did the 16 football games, that's a long-term project. Mm. Because there's no such thing as a fast football yeah. game. I was actually, uh, I got the itch to pull out game-winning drive. And I actually started printing out, I think it was the 82 season, uh, as I started getting the matchup. And I was going to try to replay every game of the 82 season. Because game-winning drive, I think it takes like 10 to 15 minutes to roll a game. You know, to to do a game properly, and, and you're gonna know everybody there. Yeah, yeah. But again, that's a team game. It's not a player game. Right. You know, but the, the hard thing about that is it takes you know three or four minutes to set up the score sheet, and then you know mm-hmm. to play the game. So I I started setting up all these score sheets in advance, and I still think I might I might do that. That would definitely be a longer project. You're Wouldn't doing be. the strike short and nine week schedule, or are you going? No, to I, I I don't know yet. I don't know. Okay. I, I I might try to do do more than that, but but um. So hey, so so when you're setting up for it, okay. Um, if you have any other product, do you like to finish up any of the other products you got going on, the small, the short, or the, the medium product? Do you like to have a clean slate? No. Bef- or do you just like? I don't. I, okay. I I don't care what else is going on. I have all these other things I haven't finished. I'm still going to start my long project. I don't want to be working on too many long projects together. Um just because they all get tangled up. And in my case, long project that is for public consumption takes priority over longer projects that are, are just for me, myself, and I. And, mm-hmm. just, and that we just kind of talk about here in the show or I might post on various web pages. But as, as far as, you know, I just want one long-term project for the channel going out at the same time. So I know that that's what my focus is going to be and I can give it my best effort and i think that because i do my pro those projects for 
the public as opposed to you just kind of sitting there and or for most of it just kind of sit there and, and do it in our dinner computer or whatever it forces me to finish the project because that's the other thing is whatever you do whatever season you choose you're going to go like gangbusters for a couple of weeks you'll probably have 10 15 maybe 20 games banged out the first month and be and then and that that brings me to my next question it's, yes it's a good segue here okay what we keep, didn't plan this, folks. No, we didn't. I, what keeps you going? Well, after that initial, yes, I'm doing this project and I'm all excited and I get going and this and that. And we talked about when the project goes sour. So the right. project could go sour. The team's not doing well. What keeps you going, you know, midway or a third way through this project? I think it's because, A, are you having a good time? Because let's say in a hockey season, 20 games, quarter of the way through. So for baseball, that would be 40 games. For football, that would be four. You're going to start to whatever engine that you love to, that you pick for, the, pick for it. You're going to find the flaws in it by that point. And it's going to be predictable. And you're going to have your, if it's a card and dice, the dice are going to get hot. So you might win a couple of games that you shouldn't have won, or you're going to get to, I'm 15 games into this. The Bruins are on that God awful West coast swing. And here we are in Colorado, freaking Rado. And we're not talking about the abs here, but you know, they're playing the Rockies and you got back to back games and against the Burger King uniforms in Vancouver. And you come down to Colorado and you get spanked seven to three, just like real life. You know, there are times, I remember, you know, enough times where the Red Sox would go to Texas and get nuked. Come on, you're better than the Texas Rangers. That's 80,000 degrees and the wind's blowing at 50. Um, So you're tired and the team is tired. The team underperforms. You can just tell and uh, I'm putting this away. And again, you know, if it's it's something that you have an attachment to, you're going to pull it out. It's just like that book. You know, a good replay is like a good novel. You get hooked into it early. You want to continue it. And, okay, about the third time the lead character either snorts the Coke or goes to the bathroom or, God, he's going to get another taco special at Jack in the Box. You know, like, oh, God, Bird fouled out the third game in a row. I'm done with this. Uh, Eventually, you're going to pick it back up and finish. Now, you could it could be a month, it could be six months. So sometimes you be, have sometimes you have to give it a rest if it's you not. Got, you kind you kind of have to let it breathe, and then you get once you pick it up, you'll get all hot and heavy again, right. and you'll forget. And then maybe the such maybe at that point you'll continue it on through there. Where oh god, I got to you know the Bruins have got to go to Philadelphia, Uniondale, and Montreal for those three games. Why can't it be Hartford and Quebec? No, it's Philadelphia. Union Dale and the Islanders are really good and Montreal. And yeah. you might think, okay, maybe one point, maybe yeah. two, maybe we can work a tie or yeah. get a win. And boom, you beat Philly four to three. You tie the Islanders and maybe you get a late win against Montreal, which never would happen in real life. No, I mean, um, you, but you know what I'm saying? That would be, oh my God, we did this. You know, yep. we, 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 we put five past Dryden or or, or, or Bunny the Rock or whatever, and that just kind of keeps you going. And you're going to learn about players that you might have had some uh, some memory of. And or, some, you, some you don't remember at all. Some, <laughs> let me give you the example of Gary Serum, who was a player I had never heard of until I did the 78 replay. He was a... Swing starter ended up starting for the Twins in 78. And he threw too many innings. And he was out of Major League Baseball, I think, in 79 and toiled in the minors. Well, in my replay, he won 19 games. He and John Matlack and Ron Guidry, Guidry was the 25 game winner in 78, were one, two, and three for the Cy Young Award winner. And so when you're like, oh, well, who the hell is Gary Serum? <laughs> right. You know, and so that's – and it would become that we would start to feature his starts because the Twins were still in contention, and this guy is pitching off the charts. You know, it's kind of like Mark a Mark Fidrich-type deal. And you turn out that, you know, Gary threw out his arm, and I believe he t- 
turn into a financial advisor or something like that. And so that sort of thing. So uh, Kevin Marquardt, uh, Lyndon Byers, uh, yep. uh, Jean Rattel might go on a tear for you that you wouldn't necessarily have depending on what season. You know how Esposito and Orr are going to do. Yeah, that's the other guys. Yeah, that's fun. You, you, you know, yeah. and, so, and so that's a thing. So they all – Take a part. You know, the Islanders one I did was just kind of like they all just kind of take a life of their own, and so they become more than just figures on cards or on a screen. You know, when you go on the power play, that oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's fun seeing oh, those no. names too. I enjoy playing these games because I see the names of the old people that. I used to watch on TV and they have their baseball, their hockey cards. It's fun. So it, it was funny you talking about uh, going out on a road trip and, and losing all those games because I remember back in, I don't know if it was 88, 89, or 90, I was watching the Bruins and they were on a, a Canadian swing and uh-huh. they, they went to Edmonton and they got destroyed like eight or nine to nothing. It was bad. And the Bruins had a lot of people hurt, too. So they were, they were on the back end of a road trip, and they were just getting manhandled. And they went up to Calgary, and the same thing happened. It was like 7 oh, nothing. Both good, Yeah, too. it was back-to-back. Back. And I forget exactly what year it was, but I remember sitting there just watching this, and I might have just been home alone. I don't remember. And it was midway through the third period. Bruins, it was, like I say, 7 or 8 to nothing back-to-back back games. And Derek Sanderson was sitting there going, well... If you're sitting here watching this now, you really are a Bruins fan. <laughs> and it just it was it was just true. It's just like, yep, there's no reason to watch this. They're playing badly. They're all banged up. They're, they're getting destroyed. It just but we're just sitting here watching it anyway. So uh so so I guess that's what keeps you going is just the the love of it and the the connection the you love have of it and, and the different stories that develop and maybe in some cases memories of sitting here watching it with a family member or listening on the radio or what have you, or just the fact that uh, just spending some time like like watching an old episode of Cheers or Hogan's Heroes or whatever your favorite TV show was, just going back and spending some time with things that made you feel comfortable. And, you know, you uh, no replay is ever going to be the same. You know, it, it, and it shouldn't be the same. Um, but you get a new appreciation, especially, you know, if it's a season from when you and I were a kid, you get a new appreciation of how things went. And when you kind of, you know, it's something that you would do a more of a hockey thing, you, you know that they're going to get into the playoffs. But was that a year where the Adams division or whatever the division was, was all kind of jumbled up and 10 points maybe separated fourth from first? Can you get home ice in that mm. semifinal as opposed to having to go to the form for game one? Do you, do you host the, the Habs or do you get – maybe you get lucky and you get Quebec or Hartford in the first you – know, what, mm. whatever that is, it's it's going to change some and you're going to get an appreciation f- uh, uh, for that yeah. or – I suppose and, and, so. I, I, let's fast forward to the end of the project now, because we talked about the beginning, we talked about the middle. So the end of the project, I guess that's where the satisfaction come in. And you were just talking that, about, yes. you know, what playoff seed you're going to get. Can you do a little bit better? Maybe you get a better matchup, you know. So the end of the project comes winding down, and maybe you finish it up. I guess there's there's got to be a, um, you know, the biggest one I did was that seals replay we talked about with shootout, and right. that still wasn't. I don't consider that a long project because I did that fairly fairly quick. That was just a, a few weeks for me to do that um but there was some when i did finish it though it was like this is kind of neat i got to compare my stats with the actual stats and that was kind of fun knowing that i went and i did that all by hand and doing that out um so there there is some satisfaction in there now that one there i never had a chance to make the playoffs at all you know but but that wasn't the point no that wasn't a point of that that replay but it would be fun to see like i say the you know when you're done you know, so so you could talk better than that because you've done a longer project to me. What is there a is there a relief? Is there a satisfaction? Is there a sadness? What happens when you finish that uh, one? All, all, all those things, all those things. You know, there is like a going back to the the book comparison. You get to the end and baseball to the regular season, and you're and you've got four games that might mean something and you're trying to figure if for most people they would play all the four games not going to stream four games in one day uh you know where do you go what do you do the next day uh if 
team A does this, then team B has a chance to do. It. So you get all the craziness, like the like the climax of a book. To you know, can the can the good guys stop the nuclear bomb from going off at the football stadium in a Tom Clancy novel or what, whatever it is? Can you can Jack Ryan save the day? You get that, and then you get to the playoffs where everything, especially in sports, changes. Because you never, especially in baseball, playoff baseball is a completely different animal from regular season baseball because everything, all everything takes super importance. And then, yeah, the sadness and the project being over mm. because you've spent a year, two years, six months, what, whatever it is, being uh, remembering and playing and all these things, and then they either get a eliminate if you're doing a single team eliminated by something you don't expect, or eventually they win the championship, which is something you don't necessarily mm. expect. And yes, there is that. Oh, we're done. Mm. And yes, you could okay. I'm going to do the next season, and we're going to continue this, but. Yeah, so it's and for you and yeah. and and the audience, uh, you know, so you finish it all up and you have all these emotions and that. What what is it? Do you are you inclined to go and do another long project right off the bat? Do you want to wait? Do you want to do some smaller ones? Do you take a break from gaming? Do you try a different game? You know what 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 is it that you I would that not you do? Do back to back long term baseball projects. You know, you need some time away. Uh, I'll be ready to go back to it, and we'll start again in January, and we'll run through August. Uh, but no, I, I do not have any dis- – when I finish the football ones especially, nope, I'm not picking up that game for another month because of whatever the reason. You finished it. You got it done. Um, but that's it. That is – I'm done with this for a while just because you need time to decompress – and you go back through, okay, what mistakes did I make and, and all that. And it's not, you know, it's, we've talked about this. Now, you want to sample different things. And you want to, you know, if you just go through and do, it'd be like if all you did was eat pineapple pizza two meals a day, uh, you're going to get sick of it after a while, no matter how much you love it. Um, and so, no, you, you just, for me, you need that break. Those, those, the, those, you know, if you're doing, let's say, a multi year project, or let's say I want to play the Bruins in this three or four year stretch, they're going to be there and they're going to be there when you pick it back up again. But mm-hmm. to do it, the, okay, we, we got beat in the Stanley Cup semis. And so tomorrow it's opening night at, at the garden. No, no, I, I couldn't do that. Yeah. You know, I, I think if, you, especially, you know, if you do a single season replay and the team disappoints which I think is the reason why a lot of those projects get shelled. Mm. Um, You feel that same emotion of unsatisfaction that you felt watching the team in real life. I mean, if you're a Red Sox fan and Tim Wakefield gives up the homer to Aaron Boone, you know, you Mm. needed those few months to get ready for 2004 or, or whatever. Um, Yeah. You just, you, The one thing I think you're going to find or anyone who's done this is going to get emotionally attached to the project. And again, you know, completing a replay is, is like writing a novel. It doesn't necessarily have to be grammatically correct and all that, but you've done all the hard work and you've pulled all the cards and you've had the good days and you've had the bad days and, at least don't to yeah. go back and edit it. Yeah. Well, let me throw this out for you and the audience as well. Another question mm-hmm. for everybody here. What, what was your longest project time-wise? Looking back through everything you've done, well, you say, boy, I remember this project lasted X. I think about a year for the hockey project for, for the 75, 76 Islanders. I, um, that was not a public consumption project, and so I could just play it on my own. Um and one of those, oh, I'm in a mood to do this. I've got 45 minutes to do this, so let's do that. And so there wasn't any time constraints. As far as one I've done for public, this was the longest one. It was 10 months. Um, there, there was um, 
somebody, I don't know if it was Facebook or Delphi. But, but there's no but there's no time frame. No, know? there's no the contract yeah. goes as long as you want. Yeah. Know. Yeah, there was somebody and I, like I said, I don't know if it was Facebook or Delphi that was doing hockey. And I forget what season it was. I think it was Oh, 30 years. Was, I think it was Delphi, right? He and he said it. he was playing every single game. Which could be a thousand games or eight hundred games or whatever it is in that, that particular season, and and he had I think he was twenty or thirty games in for each team at that time, and I was like, wow! I said, even if you're retired and not working, you played it all day. I mean, just do the math. I said, how long, how long have you been at this? He says, oh, I've been at this a few years. He goes, I'm in no hurry, and he's and enjoying the, the heck out of it, and, and it's that- like, wow. And yeah, and if you take, you know, if it's three out, if you're doing three games a week, you're not, you don't care how fast it's moving. You're playing for the enjoyment Mm -hmm. of yourself, for yourself. And so that's the other thing you don't, because again, just like a new relationship or a book that's from your favorite author or a movie, you're going to rush right out and start it and then it'll cool off. But yeah, you know, it's kind of like going to, a project like that is like going to go and having a cup of coffee with some friends. You don't know them. You know, it's not like Brian Trotty is going to call me up on the phone right now and go, hey, Ron, hmm. how you doing? You know, I mean, I'm, that's not going to happen, but it's like is whatever it is, whether it's appreciation or just comfort food. And by God, don't we all need oatmeal or whatever your favorite comfort food is after this fun year? Um, uh, you just take your time and enjoy it. Uh, we we talked about we did a specific whole show on rushing the project, mm-hmm. and sometimes they get sometimes you just especially towards the end you feel the need to do that because you get swept up into it. It's the whole yeah. Yeah, a little anxious, yeah. a little anxious, and oh, it's nine o'clock. There's nothing I want to watch on TV. I've only got a. a hundred or so pages to read well it's 275 pages to read you look up and the clock says 215 and the wife's going hmm. Why don't you shut off the light so we can get some sleep oh yeah so yeah we'd you like know. to know what everybody's longest yeah. project goes and also one last question for you and the audience what's the 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 longest or the deepest you've been into a project and then abandon it and for whatever reason, also, I'd like to know for the audience too. Is is did you ever take on a project, medium or long project, and then just a, for one reason or another, you abandon the project? And how deep were you into that project? So, roughly, I know by about a quarter season. Um, whether it's and sometimes it's the game engine. You know, for me, doing pure cards and dice and keeping score takes a bit longer, and or um, about that, I, I tend to give those projects uh, um, between 40 and 100 games. If I, you know, I've tried to do a couple full season projects, and that's just, you get to you get two last place teams by the middle of April, you know they're not going anywhere. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, I really don't care. Um, so, yeah, about 40 games, I would think, is a good determining factor, whether you're you will go back to it or not. Uh, and again, that doesn't necessarily mean that the game is bad or you didn't like the project, but there are other things. Real life will come into yeah. it. Computer well, like I say, it's, it's like a book. You know, I'm, I'm reading a book right now that started off like a house of fire, and then it it got a little confusing and hangy, and I pick it up every now and then. And I put it down, I pick it up, and I put it down. But, you know, it, it's it's fine. The book is fine, but again, it just uh, it, I I cooled off with it, like you said, and and I'm not giving up on it. But it it might take me three or four years to read this book. You know, I'll pick it up here. You know, you know, yeah, yeah. While I'm getting a haircut, I'll read a little bit, or at the doctor's office. But but that might be the only reading it gets during the week. I might only get ten or fifteen minutes a week to to do this. So yeah, um, yeah. Now, have you ever felt guilty about abandoning a project? No, 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 no. Um. The ones that I might have started on stream, either the numbers didn't really support me going through, didn't really enjoy doing it, uh, whatever, didn't get much response either way. And so, you know, no one's ever really asked me, well, where, where is more of this? Mm. Um, 
No, and I think most projects, long, medium, or short, eventually get abandoned anyway. And so when you do complete, you know, I've just finished my seventh long-term project um, as an adult. I did a, cu- a couple of football seasons as, as a college kid. Uh, but that is, and then you just reset and you, you do them again. Yeah. I know um, we just recently talked about MGD, multiple game disorder. So right. I, I think that another, might. That's another thing is that, oh, wow, look at this shiny project. Or, yeah, oh, I, 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 I watched a video on. A new game or a new season comes new out. Season or, or, oh, look, it's the history of Patriot Kickers. And, yeah, oh, it, it, you, yeah. Get, you get the itch to do something you else. You get to do that. I, I, I get, you know. For someone who's never done this before, you know, you need to have some sort of emotional attachment. And then you go through and then you do them for a variety of different reasons. The baseball project I'm doing next year is 49. It really has no connection for me turning 49, but it, it was a year that I don't really know a lot about. There's not a lot of video. To, they certainly didn't save television at that point. Um, but it was a, the year the, the Yankees beat up the Red Sox the last weekend of the season. I think the Red Sox had to go down to New York and win one. And in typical Red Sox fashion, we won none. <laughs> and, uh, and so just, you know, it's, for me, this is going to be much more of an educational experience to learn more about a certain era. You know, I've done two baseball projects that kind of harken back to my childhood, which is the, you know, I don't know where that Southern accent came from. So, you know, we've done the pop rocks, we've done the fruit loops, we've done the comfort food things, and now we're moving on to something else. But, um, but yeah, for whatever reason it is, it's, you know, so I'm looking forward to a different challenge with that, but hmm. yeah. And yeah. So, but yeah, so of all the hundreds of projects, I've started seven long-term. Yeah. So don't, so don't feel bad when you don't finish them. Yep. Well, we want to know from everybody as we wrap the uh, show 59 here at Digital Today's Podcast. Again, what was your biggest project? What do you, how do you prepare for it? Uh, how, what keeps you going? Do you ever get anxious at the end? And what are your feelings like when you complete it or you don't complete it? Have you have you bailed out on a project and felt bad or bailed out and not felt bad? Or, uh, have you rage quit? You know, like we do in video games. Something happens and we rage quit a game. We never go back to it, you know. So yep. uh like to know uh, your thoughts on that. So I guess let's wrap up show 59 here. Yes. This has been the Digital to Dice podcast. Ways to get a hold of us. DigitalToDice.com is our website over on Spreaker where we park all the shows. Uh, 978-751-DICE. 978-751-3423 is how you can send us a text. On Facebook, Facebook.com slash group slash Digital to Dice. And uh, all these shows go up on my YouTube channel, which is uh, Dave Gardner Videos on YouTube, if you'd rather listen on YouTube. Uh, anyway, uh, Ron, any final thoughts? No, it's a fun topic. Yeah, fun topic. Uh, You just finished a long product, so we wanted to get into that. And we will talk to everybody next time. Have a good day, and keep on rolling them dice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.